This week, I jump the start in race A. Race B sees me get pushed into barrier. And in race C, we have the big one with this crash. Hello everyone and welcome back to the Gran Turismo Weekly Race Guide here in 2022. It's week 32 and this week is Survival Week. Now before we get into each individual race, in the background you can see race A, which is the BMW M3 at Alsace Village. It's a full circuit as well this. However, this is a tuning event. So you tuners, oh you'll like this one. Everybody else, probably not. Let's have a look at those race details then. We're racing five laps here at Alsace in the BMW M3. It's a grid start with a false start check. We don't usually have that. Sports medium tires, tires one fuel and tire wear. And there are your settings down below. 394 horsepower, 1200 kilograms. Change the settings as you like. Now, you can still put a, an engine swap in the BMW M3. So they're going to probably dominate maybe. But it's nice that there is a horsepower and weight limit there. It does sort of give a little leniency to everybody else. There are some timestamps in the background for you. Do check them out. But without further ado, let's jump into the race then. I'll show you the race, give you a lap guide, and then also show you the setup I use for the race because it might be a good starting point. Here we are then at the start. Now, I chose to try and design the car in a sort of similar way to the Top Gear BMW that they used a while ago in the uh, Brick Car 24 Hour Race. All right, chance control on one, hold that handbrake, and don't jump the start like I did there. False start there. If you do false start, try and get out of the way of everybody else. It at least saves carnage at the start there. Uh, and we get going. Pete actually jumped it more than I did there. Crazy person. Right, into our turn one we go. We can see some people have rented the car, while others have chose their BMW M3. Now, you can buy this from Brand Central, so do not panic. You can buy it from there. But you can see the difference here quite clearly. Those that have rented the car... Absolutely just lost. There's no point renting the car. Hey, you have to buy the car. You have to tune the car and do what you need to do. I'll say, I'll show you my tune at the end of this race. You get to see it and then you can copy it or do whatever you want with it. It's not good, but it works as you see, or you will see throughout this race. Now, you'll notice I never turned trash control. Oh, Vegas going for the old drifto then. As we go into this left hand and they come across. So I back out completely. I saw them coming across. I'm just like, no, oh, no, 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 no. Now, back to traction control. I didn't turn it off. And the reason I've done that is to survive. I call this survival week. Now, there's no harm in using traction control. You're no less of a driver from using traction control. If it's there, use it. It's a real life driving aid. You know, you have it in real life. I have it on my car, you know, and I see that traction light shine as we go down the inside here then of the German. But yeah, I see the traction control light shine on my dash sometimes. You know, I know it's working. It's saving me. It's stopping me from crashing. You did it here. No problem. Right, we're side by side with the German. Let's get into this race in action as we saw Vegas absolutely lose it into that right-hander earlier on. Now, we're just trying to bounce the car through here and we go for the old sneakeroo. The cut back there! And we show a bit of Tidge Driving School-esque there. I knew they were on the inside. I knew they'd go deep. So I was like, I'll just hold on the outside and come back on the inside. It worked a charm as we catch up to Chicken Angel now on lap two here. Good livery on this BMW, and they go deep as well. A lot of people were going deep on this race. Do not go deep because you'll just lose loads and loads of positions. Break early. Break nice and easy, and you will make the corners and accelerate out of them straight as you can. As you see there, my car got a little bit wiggly. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Right, we advance a bit further on here. We've got P3 up ahead and P2 as well. P1 was very fast here as we go into this left-hander. What's happening? Oh, P3 has decided they want to have a date with Barry R there. Well, they've got... <laughs> we just heard it right at the end there as well. That's kind of funny. Uh, so, yeah, they've uh, had a date with Barry R. Now, track guide time. Let me tell you how to do this then. So, head towards turn one. The first arrow sign after the 100-meter board... Use that as your brake marker. Now, I would recommend using third gear for this quarter. Initially, you won't be in the power band, but then you will be. Although, it depends how you tune the car, I guess. But I, I was using third gear here. It helps massively. As we leave that corner, the traction control light coming on a little bit. So, as you straighten up, or as you go around the corner, you want to straighten up because that'll stop traction control coming on because the car is going straighter. So, you, the weight isn't, and your, your tires aren't trying to do as much, and the weight isn't shifting as much. Nice and easy. Right, this right hander here. Uh, you can never use the tyres on the left or the arrow. I was using the arrow mainly, and I'm braking just before that. You can see that here. Getting in a straight line and braking early. I want to take a very wide line in, keep the car as straight as possible. You notice how controlled that is. Track control light still coming on even with that. 
Now, coming through here, you're just going to let off and start bouncing the coins. Notice it's around 50%, dropped to around 20% there in terms of throttle. That tree there, it's very prominent as you go around this corner. That is your accelerating marker. When you see that, you can start to accelerate and really progress that throttle. As you see there, I straightened up the car as best as I can. A little bit of oversteer still, um, but even starting fourth gear as we head towards this right-hander. Now, easy, easy, easy marker here. The barrier there finishes there. You can see that on the left-hand side, the yellow mark. You've also got the arrow. It's like two in one. Happy days. We like those. Buy one, get one freeze. Uh, you break into here. You want to really clip the inside curb and then accelerate through the corner. As you see, Giggy got that all sorts of wrong. Uh, we try and go around the outside. That doesn't really work there, though. Be careful this bump. It will send you a bit sideways as Giggy does there, and I do as well. Now, here towards this left-hander. You have the arrows on the right-hand side there. Break before the first one. You have to break before it. A lot of people will try and break after it, and they'll go way too deep, as we saw. I think it was Gorilla earlier on do that. So, through here we go. A wider line I find is better, though Giggy definitely did it better than me there as we leave that corner. So, this corner here is all about bouncing the car. So, I lift off initially, and I'm going to slowly come on the power. Notice I'm slowly you coming on the power here, using the camber of the, uh, the corner, and then I'm going to straighten up and then foot to the floor. And you'll notice the run I got there, I'm easily catching Giggy using that line. Now, for this corner, this is a very tricky corner to really give you brake markers, but I'm going to give you some ideas here, okay? On the left-hand side, you've got multicolored sort of trailers. Use them as your brake marker. I've picked out the white one here. So initial slow down here. You're slowing down initially. When you get in a straight line, then you brake hard and you drop to the second gear. Allow the cars to get around the corner. Slowly come on the throttle. The track control light really helped me out on that corner. Leave the corner, get to the right-hand side. Now, the first arrow, once again, these arrows are Perfect brake markers or turning markers. Um, you might want to dab the brake a little bit here or just lift off. You can do a lift off, but it gets very tricky with speed. So I'm doing that here. I'm lifting off. I'm trying to balance the car. You notice the car is getting a little bit twitchy because I'm on the edge of adhesion, as they say, as we go over the crest of the hill. I'm going to head down the hill. Now, as you go over this bit of the crest of the hill, and I've just paused it here. This is where you break hard, okay? You need to break early here. Because it's downhill, if you even remotely break too late, you're going into Barry R. You're about to see Giggy go a bit too late here. And I nearly end up in Barry R. Just survive just there onto the grass as we then come into this left-hander. Be careful about this. You want to straight line it. Keep in third gear again as we then look towards the left-hand side. Now, Giggy goes towards the left here and sort of pushes me onto the grass a little bit. I wasn't happy. It's a slight tap there. I couldn't really do anything about it because you pushed me off into the grass a little bit. But yes, this race, um, there's not going to be a lot of racing action, if I'm brutally honest, because everybody's going to have different tunes and it's all going to be a bit spread out. As you can see by the times there, it's 5 seconds and 10 and 15. So yeah, it is what it is. Here's my setup though. So you can see that there. I lowered the car a little bit. I put maximum downforce. It's a good tip here, by the way. It helped me out massively. But you can see the ballast and everything there. Here on the right hand side, you can see that as well. Always good here. Get the weight reduction to the maximum and then add the ballast because then you can exactly hit the 1200. Otherwise, you will not get the car light enough. Uh, same with power. I just added all the power stuff and then I knocked it down accordingly. And I adjusted power output and the uh, power restrictor to get the perfect horsepower because there is a difference there as well. That's it for race A then. I do enjoy it if you're a tuner. Let's head to race B. Welcome then to Watkins Glen for race B. And we're in group four. Now, because we've got the mixture of the bops now, this has made the race slightly more interesting, I think. Maybe. I'm not too sure because I chose a different car than I normally would. And it seemed to work out very nicely. Let's head to the race details first of all. We are racing five laps here at Watkins Glen. It's a full course as well. It's a rolling start, which is okay-ish. Racing hard tyres, times one fuel and tyre wear. And the bop is on the high-speed bop in group four. So the car I chose, the Genesis. Yes, now the Genesis was doing very well in time trial at Brands Hatch. So I thought, mm, I'll try it at Watkins Glen. It's worked out very well, to be honest with you. Worked out very well indeed. Now you're about to watch my second race, my first race. I'm actually going to do a separate video on because it was a bit uh, all over the place. So do look out for that later this week. Without further ado then, let's jump to the race. Let's have a look exactly what happens as well as a beautiful overtake. We are then at the start. Mixture of cars. UTR is expected. Uh, we've got Supra in there as well. We've got WRX, which expected. All four-wheel drive cars are usually in here. I said I chose the Genesis because of Brands Hatch. You know, I felt I could do quite well in that time trial. I did jump on it for like half an hour or so. I felt that there were 27s in there, but nobody got a 27, which was a bit weird, to be honest with you. Maybe I was a bit too eager or too over-exaggerated with my time, but I'm pretty sure 27s were there. Anyway, let's get on with this race, because this isn't Brands Hatch. It's Watkins Glen, uh, which means we're near New York, I think. But I don't quote me on that in terms of its location. We have Cheesy here. Cheesy, I'm going to give you a bit of a notice here. Now, you're not fully a TCR member yet, mate. So you need to make sure you're on the Discord. If you're on the Discord, in our, the Tissue Discord, we can give you the role. Then you're officially a TCR member. But uh, thank you all the same for representing TCR. 
So, they get the inside of Ghost Rider. Now, I wanted to follow them through here because why not? Um, try and get back. And uh, the Subaru just backed out of this completely, which is nice of them to do that. As uh, so we get oh, a bit of oversteer there. We don't want the oversteer. Uh, but I would recommend doing what that Subaru did if you are on the outside because too wide into the chicane doesn't go. As you will see later on. Anyway. Through here we go. We've got Mighty Clipper up ahead and uh, Captain Stupendous. A shout out again to you. And Mighty Clipper as well. Uh, so we go in to this left hander and we're all good so far on the outside of Mighty. This is going to be very hard to do. Now, I needed to get a bit more on the inside there and it didn't really work out. So I actually lost quite a lot of time there from not using all the camber of the corner. So we're a bit far back here. So we can't really do much. However, we're going to stay on the action, which does mean there is some action. As uh, so we head towards... Uh, oh, who's that? Is that Corvette down the inside of Cheesy? As uh, so we get on the outside there of Mighty Clipper. And that is another position for us. We've got a bit of a run on Captain Stupendous here in the other Genesis. So you can see that run that we've got here. Not 100% sure where to shift in this Genesis. I'm not sure whether I was over revving it, under revving it, or just revving it. I'm not too sure. Um, but... We continue on all the same. So on the outside here. So this is very dangerous. I'm never going to go too wide into the chicane at all. So it's a case of just backing out of here and taking the chicane as normal. However, I catch you stupendous. Doesn't take it normal. Decides to visit Barry. Oh, and the Corvette there struggling as well. But that was a proper exit to the stage right there by Captain Stupendous. Sorry to see that, mate. But uh, it was a bit funny at the time just to see that drift and that just inevitability of hitting the barrier. Right, we catch up to Cheesy here. We're going to try that move again that we tried last lap. This time using a bit more of the camber and I'm making it work. There we go. Up into P9. Happy days. Job is a good one. Now we've got Squish and Staraf up ahead. The Brit and the Greek. What are we going to do then? Turn one. Here we go. The 200 foot board. As we go into here. Now we get a good momentum. Squish has gone wide. Sturaf didn't get a good exit. And here we go with a beautiful move. Three wide. And I get it done before the corner. Oh, that is so, so, so. I'm going to try and put that into the overtakes of the week at Veloce, you know. See if I can uh, get in there. Now, let's look at this rear view camera. Because it's all getting a bit tasty. So I give Cheesy uh, the slipstream. Because it's a bit cheesy. Giving it your teammate anyway. Uh, all the same. But you can see the GTRs. This is where they do gain here. We're going to head in towards the chicane, in towards that braking zone. There's a tap there between the two. They both hit barrier and they've gone. It does give me a big gap, but we'll have another look at that at the end in terms of the bloopers, exactly what happened there. It all looked a bit weird, to be honest. I think there may have been some net code. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll have a look and see what we can do. Anyway, carrying on here, we've got Dan up ahead. And we've got a track guide as well, believe it or not. So, 200 feet board. I know I said meters last time. It's feet. Everyone shouted at me it was feet. It's feet. 200 meters. Uh, did it already. I did it already. <laughs> it's feet. It's his feet. 200 foot board. That is your brake marker as you come through here. Make sure you stay on the curb. Otherwise, you are getting a penalty. And it's not a nice penalty here because it's up the hill as well, which means it's horrendous. So, we get on the inside of Dan. Happy days. The curse position is ours. Fantastic. As we continue on through here. Now head over towards the left hand side. A bit of slipstream from... I think that's Genesis up there. I can't fully tell. It's in the Genesis colours anyway. Um, as we head towards the, the old chicken here. The bus stop. So you can use the 300 feet board and break just after it. Or use the Marshall box and break just before it. Now I kind of like the Marshall box. But I broke a little bit early here to be fair. Um, and I could have broke a little bit later. Now you want to use and abuse the left hand side of the chicane. And not the right hand side. It gives you a good line then for this right hander. Now as you go into here, you start bouncing the car, slowing the car down a bit, and you're looking for that Marshall box there. The second, the millisecond you see it, start accelerating. You should make the corner in the Genesis. There it is, as it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Use that as your accelerating marker. It is a beautiful marker. All right, we're going to head towards the braking zone here. 200 feet board again. I'm going to exaggerate feet because I keep wanting to say meters. Uh, once again, this is your brake marker. You can break it just after it, actually. I'm breaking a bit early here because of the Genesis up ahead. Now, as you come into here, it's a later apex. Now, you see how this barrier comes towards the circuit. It gets very close to the barrier there. The armco, should I say. The barrier gets close to the armco. That is your accelerating marker. It's a weird marker, I know, but I use it all the time. And look how good it is. I get a super run. And I can't even use all the circuit, but still get the run on that Genesis as we head towards this right-hander then. You want to break as close to the 100-foot board as possible. And again, a later apex here is actually better than a tight one. Um, you don't want to go too wide. Uh, you want to start, say, in the middle circuit and then clip the inside. But there's a Genesis on my inside, so I can't really do that. There's a little bit of a runoff there. It's the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little bit of a runoff there that you can use. Uh, and then we continue on as they take the penalty. 
Now, heading towards this right-hander. Very difficult right-hander to nail, really, because you're breaking between the 200 and 100-foot board. However, in the race, there's a caravan where that 200-foot board is. As that caravan hits the edge of your screen, you can use that in the race. Happy days! We get an extra brake marker in the race. Now, you want to clip the inside. Do not run too wide here. I know you can in the old other game, iRacing, but not here. So, heading up the hill, 100 meter. No, I've done it again. No! Oh, Tidge! 100 foot board is your marker. Now, you want a late apex here again. It's all late apexes at Watkins Glen because it's just better for the uh, exit, as you will see here. You come through here, you clip that curb, accelerate through because the barrier comes at you there. That's why you don't go for an early one. Otherwise, you'll run too deep and yeah, you'll hit it. Now, the 100 foot board. I will get it right. The 100 foot board, you're going to lift off here a tiny bit and then accelerate again. That's all you got to do. No braking involved here whatsoever. So do that as we go through here. And look at that, we had plenty of speed there that we could have carried. Now, heading towards this last corner. The billboard stays there in the race as well. So, I'm using this now. I've done the lights on the right-hand side. So, break just before that billboard hits the end of your screen. Uh, and then turn in. Now, as you clip that curb, accelerate straight away. And you should make it without hitting the barrier. Right, that is the lap guide done. Let's have a look if we can catch up to Lolo as we head in towards this braking zone then. We're going to clip that inside, start accelerating very quickly. Notice the run we get there. That is superb. That's a very scary looking minion on the back, whatever it is. Now, in towards this braking zone, again, the later apex is better. Now, we get an absolute massive run here, and we continue on, and they hit me off into the barrier. Now, I questioned them after the race about this. I said, that is dirty driving. And they said... I just closed the door. No, no, I'm already there. You're closing the door. Yes, if I wasn't there, but I was already there. You can't do that. That is dirty driving, Lolo. I'm sorry to say it is dirty driving. So you can't do that. If somebody is there, you can't just shove them into the barrier. They've made the move at that point. That is your own fault for not taking the corner correctly. It is not the other person's fault because they've had a better run. Now, if you'd have come over and I wasn't there, that is fine. I would have lifted off, but I was already there at that point. You can't close the door. So no, Lolo. No, no, no. It's bad and dirty driving. Um, you could consider it bad because you thought you were closing the door, but it's dirty driving. You put somebody into the barrier. Do that in real life, there'll be consequences. Anyway, that is it for race B. Let's head to race C. Welcome then to Yamagiwa. We're back at the who can do the cutting the chicane the best track. And we are in group three machinery. And weirdly, and you can see that in the background, I chose an unusual car. But we'll get into that in a second. Let's have a look at those race details. We're racing 12 laps here at Yamagiwa. It's a rolling start, which I wish they could get fully right. So it's a racing medium tires. It's times one, fuel times one, tire wear, and the bop is on the medium speed. And I don't know much about the bop at the moment in terms of what car's good, what car's bad. However, I did notice the AMG was top of the time trial. So I took it for the race. Now, let me tell you something. The AMG is very good in this race. I highly recommend using this car for the race. Without further ado then, let's jump to this race. Let's have a look at the absolute massive crash that happens, as well as some of the other racing action, because once again, it's all about survival. We are then at the start. So we've got Mazda in P1. We've got Beatles in here. We've got the Nissan. We've got the Genesis as well. So mixture of cars. Good to see, actually, to be fair. Now, if they could start tweaking this bop just a teeny tiny little bit, a little bit more, getting even closer, because now we've got three bops for the circuits. This could get absolutely awesome. But we'll wait and see how that develops in due course. Right, we're going to warm up our tyres first of all as we head towards turn one. And we're going to go into here then. And we've got a battle up in the distance there. I'm not sure what that is or who that is. It looks like Genesis on the inside of something or somebody as we continue. Oh, we've got a yellow flag already. Who is this? Oh, no. It's Techno. 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 Techno Tim there um, hitting barrier. In fact, Techno Tim does some awesome sportsman-like stuff, which you will see later on in the bloopers. So in towards here we go. And I say, cutting the chicane the best is what you have to do this week. And we nail it there. Got the inside of Danny. That is one position gained on that rainbow Genesis there. And we've got Supra in the distance then. So it was a Supra that had the Genesis on the inside. And we're going to be on the outside now. But unfortunately, they clip the curve. And they go around. So we gain that position. Happy days. We've got wind in the distance then. We know wind is on these very early and very quick as well. Now on the inside of that GTR of Snellergy. As we go into the braking zone then. Just trail braking a little bit. Just getting that speed down enough there. Just keeping on that curb and accelerating through the corner. What can we do versus a GTR? That is the question. So in towards the S as we go. And then the right hand side. And oh, we see smoke. Oh, big smoke. Oh, 
get your foot planted, Tidge. Oh, how many positions was that? I'm not sure. Three, four, no idea. But we get up into the cursed one. Happy days. Uh, I was hoping the ghosting would work. And it did. Yes, thank you, Grand Turismo. I love free positions like that. We will have a look at exactly what happened there after because it's quite a big crash, which I don't think is anyone's real fault. And it's just a collision and racing incident. But I say, we'll have a look. Right. In towards the chicken we go. Once again, trying to cut it as best as we can. The GTR gets a little bit of oversteer there. We're going to have the run on that GTR then. Up the hill we go. You do need the momentum on this. But I'll explain that in the lap guide. In towards the braking zone then. And up into P5. Not doing too shabby here at all. Now, the person in P1 is Haku. For those wondering, they're using a nickname with uh, some alphabet. I'm assuming that's Japanese of some kind. Um, as we then head towards the chicken once again. So I'm going to clip the left and then the right. And, whoa! Oh, we got it wrong this time. <laughs> hey, we survived, though. We survived and we continue on. So staying in this P5, the GTR just staying behind as well. And we continue on. So in towards this left, we go. Oh, Ghost has gone for a spin. Oh, my word. That was a big spin. Now, a lot of cars do spin there. I think it's the wind direction, which you notice on the map is sort of like pointing that way. So when you go in the brakes and the weight shifts, I think that's what... Cool. Oh, we got that wrong, Tidge. What are you doing? Your weapon. Right, anyway. Oh, whoa. Oh, it's calm, Tidge. Calm, calm. You did this race. You know what's going to happen, apparently. But... Uh, Seem to forget what I've edited. Anyway, in towards this uh, little right and left hander. And oh, wind's gone as well. I did say it's about survival this week. There are so many spins in this race. It is actually uh, nuts. Uh, we're going to get into a fight and a lap guide. But the wind, I think, does affect the braking into that corner. Pushes the car a bit more, adjusts the weight a bit more, and causes a bit of oversteer. So do be careful on that corner. Right, turn one. You can use a Marshall box, which is literally alongside here, or the 50 meter board, and you're braking just after it, believe it or not. It's a very, very, very late braking uh, marker here as we go into here. Fourth gear in the AMG. We're just trying to get it rotated, rotated, waiting, 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 and full on we go here and continue on out. It's not too shabby. Do not go on the grass. Do not go on the grass. Is this a Jurassic Park Lost World? Don't go into the long grass. Don't do it. Right, we get a run up here. Now, you can do this flat behind somebody, which is nice to know, actually, because usually you have to lift in GT Sport, not in GT7, as we get alongside uh, Abdullah there. Now, this left-hander, the Marshall box on the right side, brilliant brake marker. And as I say, be careful into this braking zone because I think the wind is just tipping the cars to make them a bit more oversteery. So it can get sketchy. We've seen ghostly spin. I definitely lost the rear a couple of times, but I course it very nicely. I just haven't shown you that um, because it's a bit boring. Um, and I'm showing you the lap guide. I'm explaining it all right now. Right, the chicane. This is one where you want to brake early. Now, critically with this chicane, if you're going to cut it and you want to be safe, cut the right-handed part. Do not cut this left-hander. If you want to absolutely annihilate this corner, you need to cut all of it. But I just use the curb here. I want straight line this bit, and then I can then cut that little bit. But the whole idea there is the right-hander is the main one to cut to get you run up the hill. The left is just nice, and everything else is just nice. The right is the critical part. So that is what you need to focus on on that chicane. Uh, this hairpin left-hander is our usual brake marker here, as always. The, you've got the text here for 35R. It's the end of that text in the middle there. Um, it's going to be second gear here. A later apex is preferred because then you can get a nice run out the corner and accelerate a bit quicker. It's a bit of an accelerating point there. Head down the hill. Now, you've got to be careful here. I recommend lifting off a little bit here, allowing the car to roll through. Now, as you straighten up here, the end of the curb is also your marker here. You're going to straight line brake a little bit, okay? You want to full on brake a little bit here, drop it down well under 90 miles an hour. I think it's around 80 that you're going to get to, 86 there, and continue on through. Now, we're still a bit on the grass there. You do have to be careful that. We saw wind lose it there, remember? It's very easy to do. This last corner then, the Marshall box on that left-hand side, or the 50-meter board if you want to be last of the late breakers. Um, on the left-hand side there is your brake marker for this final corner. A late apex again. Big, big old straight this. Later apex means you carry more speed through it, and it means you may get an overtake in towards turn one. We have had to lap 12, though, because nothing much uh, really happens uh, in the race. Haku does have a bit of an off at some point in the middle of the race as well. So everybody is having slides and oversteer moments here. So it's a big, big, big race in terms of survival. You can survive you will gain places you really will look at techno tim off at lap one second one finishes p8 well played techno tim and that is going to be it in terms of the races however remember we have bloopers and the bloopers we're going to have a look at some of those incidents race b and race c let's jump to them now here we are then on board cheesy now i thought i'd just show you on this far back. We can have a look at this move from me again. Look at that around the outside of two people. Oh, how good was that? Right, okay. Let's have a look at the incident then. So, we've got Cheesy here. Now, I say, Cheesy, you need to make sure you join a Discord before becoming an official TCR member. Then go look at this as a TCR member all the same. So, uh, we look down at the right-hand side then of the Alpha. The Alpha's gone at this point. We've got Storaf on the left. 
I'm giving the slipstream here to Cheesy. Um, now, heading towards here, what happens? Oh, right. Straff goes on the brakes. Cheesy goes into the back of Straff. Uh, I am going to say, Cheesy, that's your fault, if I'm honest. Um, you, were, you can't really dive at the chicane. It's not a place to dive. And at that point, you were the car behind, so I would have given that up. Um, nice here, the recovery and such. But yeah, I'd have given that up. That is your fault there, I'm afraid. Uh, cheesy, so something to look at in the future. Now, if they're part of TCR, we'd give you a warning, but you're not officially there yet. But, you know, just... I don't know whether you said sorry after or not, but obviously we'd ask for your perspective as well. Right, Techno Tim does what you shouldn't do here and clips the grass and... Oh, oh, oh big barrier hit there. Uh, manages to stop the car, gets it out of the way. Beautiful stuff. This is the sportsmanship I was talking about there. Beautiful stuff. Right, the big instant now. We got the big one. Um, as Nico said in Discord after. So coming into here, we can see the side by side. Oh, there's contact there between that Supra and the Beetle then, and it all just kicks off. And yeah, unfortunately for Nico, just got in the wrong place, the wrong time there. Let's have a look at it from TCR players' perspective. Two TCR members in incidents here. Now, coming through this left. On the side, did less off there to make sure they didn't hit Wetticon Towers. <laughs> what a name that is. As we go into the left and then in towards this right. Now, too wide. In oh, okay. Okay, we can see exactly what happened there. The Supra just carried a bit too much speed, went straight into the Beetle. And then, yeah, it's just carnage and a full-on blown racing incident there. And then uh, we're going to see a TCR player just get out of the way here to make sure they're off the racing line. But yeah, big incident there. Too wide doesn't work. And the Supra did not really give uh, light off enough speed there for that to happen. Right. My, well, my luck is up there for subscribing. What? There is a subscribe button there. Click it. Look, half of you are not subscribed. If half of you were subscribed, we'd be very close to 40k in another special. I know I've not done the 30k one yet, but, you know, if you are not subscribed, please think about it. It really, really does help the channel out massively and it costs you nothing and you stay up to date with all the content. My logo is there now to subscribe. There are two videos there to check out. That is going to be it for me, folks. Thanks again for watching. Please give it a like on the way out as well. Au revoir. Farewell. Goodbye.